Hey everybody, this is Mr. Creepy Pasta again, and I'm finally getting around to doing another one of these All the Ass, which has been like a year since I did my last one. And um, because of the way that they kept running into last year, the whole reason I ended up stopping it is because I wasn't actually able to do all of the asks, because by the time I did like the third one, I think, either the third or fourth one, you guys had sent me like 250 to 300 messages, which has given me way too much to actually be able to do all of them. So, um, now we're doing an all the asks in more of an ask me anything style. I, uh, uh, three days ago, I think, I opened up the inbox for anybody to send me, uh, questions for this video, and I'm gonna go ahead and go through them, which is interesting, because I don't actually go through them at all, uh, over those three days, so this is the first time that I'm reading your questions, so I'm gonna go through them and find ones that I can't answer, and I'm gonna answer them in this video, so hopefully it's not gonna take me seven hours. So, let's see. SoulZenX742 asks, what's my opinion on R.L. Stein? Um... You know, I actually haven't read any of his books since I was a kid, so, uh, he's fine by me. I, I don't see, um, any problem with the guy. I used to love to read his books when I was a kid, though, so, um, yeah. Let, let's lose sleep, asks, uh, do you watch Rick and Morty? I don't know what that is. No, I don't. I, I don't watch it. I don't know what Rick and Morty is. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. <laughs> um, I, Dave Strider, 413 asks, when will we see your face? Um, you know, when I, cause like, my channel's almost at 400,000 right now. Um, so I was thinking I might do another, or I might do another, yeah. I might do a, um, like, unmasking video for 500,000. We'll see. We'll see what happens in like the spring and summer, if I can hit that. So, uh, here's hoping. Messageophilia asks, I know I ask so many questions about your persona, and I'm sorry. Imagine that you're creating your persona afresh. How would he look? Give the blue guy... Given the blue guy was an accident. Oh, okay, yeah. So, um, what, what they're, um... What they're referring to is the fact that a little while ago in another live stream, I think, I had talked about how the blue guy is the icon for Mr. Creepy Pasta is actually not what I wanted uh, when I started out. My friend who's silenced Requiem on DeviantArt, uh, you can look her up. She has the original pictures as well as pictures she's done of him. Um, actually, I, I went to her because we went to college together and she was an art major. And I asked her if she could draw me up like something scary to use as an icon. And I was thinking to use a clown. Uh, and she didn't have time for it then, so she just gave me this painting, the original painting of the blue guy, uh, that she had actually done off the structure of my face with the with the gas mask on, and said, just use that for now, I'll make you something later. Uh, so I, I didn't like it at all, uh, but I used it anyway, and I kept bugging her and bugging her, and she never got around to making me a new icon, so after it was, it was there for so long, it just stuck. So, um... If I had to recreate my persona now, I actually couldn't see myself being anything other than the blue guy. Especially teamed up with, with Junior and Creep, seeing as we're blue, red, and yellow. Um, I couldn't see myself as being anything else. If if I did, maybe I wouldn't make him so um, huge. Like, if in a lot of ways that I always kind of draw the character, I see a lot of people draw him, he's a really huge buff guy. Um, but the way that Silent Requiem always drew him, he was actually kind of a more slender guy, so it would make sense that my voice is like medium high to come out of him instead of it expecting like when a really big hulking superhero guy, but I still I wouldn't I wouldn't make any major changes to the character uh, Official Mango Mayhem asks uh, for the ask video, what would you do if you were a girl for a day? My makeup It's a clean video. I'm not going there. Ano <laughs> Anonymous asks, um, do I like lost episode creepypastas? I do as long as they're written well. I, I could like anything as long as it's written well. Um, like, because there's stuff that I haven't seen that I would love to see more of, like some more sci-fi kind, stu kind of stuff. Um, but they're, they're kind of hard to find that aren't just like, uh, 
attempting to go into like sci-fi action uh, and kind of stray away from horror too much. So I, I like it. Um, creepy, creepy pasta pool asks, who is the most attractive creepy pasta narrator? Um, creeps McPasta. Anonymous asks, okay, here I go. Uh, <laughs> Alright, nope. Uh, Liam Tyne asks, what's my favorite drink? Alcoholic and non-alcoholic. Um, alcoholic drink, I generally drink, um, I will generally drink a, uh, rum and coke or a jack and coke. Uh, so usually I, I like to drink Jack Daniels. Um, non-alcoholic, I drink root beer a lot. Like, Bart's root beer is my favorite. Um, Benjamin Rickhard asks, oh, what got you into reading creepypastas? And if someone asked you that already, okay, which they did, <laughs> then, um, backup question is, who is better, pirates, ninjas, or squirrels? Um, I was actually into pirates, I think. Ninjas are, ninjas are cool. Squirrels, I guess, no, squirrels are better. Marvel Comics Squirrel Girl, best one, can beat anything. Amy and Div... Oh, wow, I cannot pronounce that. Amy and... I've... Iva? Amy and I... I'm sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, sorry if you have gotten this before, but... Have you ever done any professional voice work, or would you accept an offer uh, for voiceover work? Just curious. I... Haven't. I don't think. I'm trying to think. I don't think I've done anything professional yet. I know that there's, like, talks of me doing some stuff audiobooks, um, even like the, the voiceover work I've done for video games has always been for um, fan-made games or amateur games. Uh, not to say they're amateur games, but like um, uh, indie games. So there's there's really not been a um, any like big professional work that you can be able to spot me in um, yet. Hoping that I could do it, because yeah, if I, I would accept an offer for voiceover work if, if I ever got it. Um... Anonymous asks, could I read a Brazilian creepypasta? Is that like a creepypasta that doesn't shave? The, um... I've never heard of one. Uh, if I find one, yeah, I, I could read one. But I... That's an interesting one. I don't know what a Brazilian creepypasta is. Just one set in Brazil. Um... Sometimes Good Enough asks, what inspires me? Um, when it comes down to my writing, um, I can tell you that what goes a lot into the way that I write is um, that I'm a, I'm a big film buff and it doesn't just deal with horror movies which I, I do love horror movies but um, I just like movies a lot like I have an entire bookshelf that, I got this massive bookshelf in my apartment and the whole thing is just filled with DVDs and um, whenever I try to write or even when I'm trying to just edit stories I try to think of everything uh, cinematically in the way that the music and sound effects would be able to play with uh, the image that I see in my mind from the way that it's, um, uh, from the way that it sounds, uh, and a lot in my writing, um, or I also listen to audiobooks and audio dramas a lot, uh, graphicaudio.net is a lot of, um, stuff that kind of goes into that, so whenever I'm writing audio dramas, um, I, I play a lot off of the, what I've heard, or what I've heard before in, in those kind of scenarios, and also, of course, if you read, if you've heard my, um, comic book stuff, then comics inspire my writing, obviously, there. Miss Spooky Noodles asks, MCP, if you were a Pokemon trainer, what Pokemon would you have on your team? Well, I am a Pokemon trainer, because I got X and Y, and I, I actually attempted to make my own ghost team, but um, they totally suck. So, uh, in my team, if I was going to make my, my team of Pokemon that I like, I would have uh, my favorite Pokemon, which is Raichu. I would have a Gengar, because Gengar is... I've really learned to love that thing since it's been on my team. Uh, crap, what does a, a Groudon evolve into? I gotta look that up. Is it Groudon? No, not Groudon. Um, crap, what was that giant shark dragon? I have it on my team and I love it to death and I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> the shark dragon type Pokemon. That thing is a total badass and it, it like carries my entire team on its back. Um... Let's see what I got. A ghost, an electric, a dragon. Oh, my waylord. I need that one. Um, my pumpkaboo. She's adorable. Oh, and my um, 
Oh, what's the giant golem? Is it actually golem? Not golem. Golurk. Thank you. Yeah, I need to have my Golurk on my team because it can fly. Which it doesn't really fly, it just jumps really high and then falls onto something. Uh, Deadpool's... <laughs> Deadpool's bitch asked, Where do you find most of the art that goes into your videos? Um... A lot of the stuff that I'll find will be either from, um, I've actually kind of changed it around a lot because I used to just Google search everything. Uh, a lot of the stuff that I do now is actually really kind of, I, I have to do a lot of hand picking it to, to kind of be careful what I use. Uh, a lot of it will come from Wikipedia, uh, so that it's, it's free source stuff, or um, a lot of them will come from um, uncopyrighted material uh, that I'm able to find from other um uh, from other different various sources around online uh, and even still I would usually have a good amount of hand in um, changing the image and, and adding certain things if you notice like in a couple of like the recent videos even I've been trying to, to work a lot more with GIFs or um, changing around the video editing so that things just seem a little bit more eerie adding in shadows that will fade and uh, they'll fade in fade out or slowly move or change around the screen so if you're if you're listening to a story because I, I know a lot of people listen to stories and just kind of have them on in the background and let the playlists run um, just look back every once in a while and see if you can you can catch something might have changed uh, in the image that you weren't expecting to either be there or uh, as it was there and then it's now gone uh, well hey productions or old man Murphy uh, meant to ask this when I was being interviewed in the live stream because I was in his live stream a while back if you haven't seen it uh, well hey productions on YouTube uh, but when I got started on YouTube, was it an instant success or did it take a while to really get rolling? Was there a momentum shift from mediocrity to quasi-celebrity status on YouTube? You know, I don't like that word. Uh, if so, could you tell us about the moment that brought you thousands of subscribers? Um, you know, there was, um, it, it, it was definitely not an instant success. I was doing uh, creepypastas very, very loosely on YouTube for, I want to say, about a year, a little over a year and a half. Yeah, a little over a year and a half, because this is, I've been doing this for three years now. Um, a little over a year and a half before anything really started going. And, um, in that first year and a half, I think I maybe did 25, 50 videos. Um, I could tell you that probably the big one that really started getting everything off was, um, Squidward Suicide. Um, and then, so yeah, it was Squidward Suicide, Cupcakes, and, um, Jeff the Killer. Those are, like, the three big ones that really started getting things going, because I don't think anybody had really done, oh, well, I know there was a couple different videos, and they were, they were still really well done, put together, because, um, there was some editing done for the background, for sounds, and things like that for those stories, but there wasn't, they weren't really, um, embraced too much on YouTube. Uh, then later on, I know I saw uh, a couple of a couple of other things that started getting really huge: the cupcakes, music videos, and animations. Um, but at that time, like the really kind of big things when you were searching for them, uh, were all Microsoft Sam doing readings, which I mean, which works in its own well in, in its own way. I mean, the, the robotic voice works fantastic in some cases. I mean, if you look at Litterbot, who uses kind of um, a Gladys type effect on his voice to make him sound like a robot. Um, he has some amazing work that is incredibly eerie, but, um, at the time when it was just Microsoft Sam, I think it kind of gets a little bit dull. So having like an actual, um, audiobook style of those was re really started kind of boosting me up with those three stories specifically, because there were other people doing creepypastas at the time, but, uh, for those three stories, uh, they hadn't touched them. So that was it. Uh, there wasn't really like a moment that brought thousands of subscribers in. Um, but it's definitely a growth process, and I think that was that was a thing. Like I try to convey to a lot of people that are getting started, is that you're not gonna get like you're not gonna post five videos um, and expect bam I'm gonna get a hundred thousand subscribers in, in a month. It it actually takes a good amount of great uh, of growth, and that growth is not gonna pay off for a long long time. Um, but then if you persevere, you know you you stick with it, then. Um, you'll either be known as, I mean, this is the mentality I got in this with was if I stick with it, no matter what people say, no matter what people tell me, uh, I'll either be known as doing the, being the best of this, or I will be known as doing the absolute worst and not stopping. So <laughs> I just kept going. On the 
Pyre Next asked, um, how do you feel about the idea of being interviewed? If this is another guest thing, um, then this is a universal question. Also big fan. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. All the asks is just me. Um, how do I feel about being interviewed? I've been in a couple of different interviews, um, so I'm, I'm cool with it. Uh, <laughs> I've been interviewed for a couple different podcasts, uh, Dimension Bucket. I've been in uh, live streams, uh, Little Creepy Pasta 13, uh, Baby, Well Hey Productions. I've been in, um, uh, and even when, when Spill.com was around, I was, I was interviewed with them over on Halloween. And, um, no, I'm fine with it. I love that. If you guys have, like, a podcast or anything, I'll, I'll be on. I'm down. Cookie, or uh, XX Cookie Vampire, Vampirus XX asked, um, hey, MCP, as an aspiring creepypasta writer, what are some simple do's and don'ts in writing uh, a good story? Also, I just wanted to say that you're amazing and you inspire with a passion of narrating. Thank you so much for all that you do. Thank you very much. Um, well, there's one thing that I, I like to say about things, and this might just be me. Um, but I usually like it whenever a creepypasta is going to keep things, uh, relatively simple. Like, that doesn't mean that it needs to be short, but that means that whenever I'm, if I'm writing something, um, it needs to follow a plot, and that plot may be able to, to take twists and turns here and there, but the whole story is going to central around the plot that I'm writing. At no point am I going to, am I going to stray away from that. If I'm writing a Jeff the Killer story... Jeff is going to be the main character. I may have other characters in place, but if he's walking through a warehouse, I'll describe the warehouse he's in and why exactly is that relevant that I describe that to the plot. Otherwise, you know, I'm not going to try to bring in more characters and say, oh, there's uh, homeless people here and they're talking about this and they have uh, so many, like, they're having so many problems here and there. Because they're, they're not central around what's happening to Jeff. If there's not even a reason for him to be in this warehouse, I won't have him there. Um, there's there's a lot of cases where I, I'll, I'll actually get deterred or uh, listeners can get um, confused. Because now, it, when you're writing it in your story, it may seem like a little blurb that you're just kind of throwing in because it seems like a cool effect. Or these are other people that you just kind of have in your mind that you want to have them in the story. But um, when you're listening, that might be like a two minute deference from the actual story um, that now has become confusing because it doesn't fit in with the the other five minutes that's there. Uh, so I guess like the one piece of advice I can say is keep things simple. Um, keep in mind that building tension does not necessarily mean that you're dragging things out. Anonymous asks, did I draw my icon? My Tumblr icon is not. No, I didn't draw that. That actually came from Deadpool's bitch. <laughs> Deadpool's hyphen uh, bitch.tumblr.com. She, um, she did my icon for me if you want to look at it on Tumblr. It's little MCP with his Superboy shirt on, which is one of the things that I own. I have six of those. Puppy Cup, though, asks, have I ever played or uh, heard of the Midnight Game? Oh, well, I have heard of it. I did a video over the Midnight Game, but no, I don't. I haven't played it. I don't do any rituals. I honestly uh, don't feel like anyone should. But I mean, they're out there, so I don't tell you how to live your life. Um, half creepy, half sweet asks, looking back as an adult, do you think there were any hints that you would start narrating horror stories? Also, did you ever think that you'd uh, become so well known? Well, um, I'll tell you one thing. When I was in high school, and I did not expect this at all. Uh, when I was in high school, I, I joined the speech team, which was oral interpretation. Um, I just did it for fun because I wanted to have a class I could just kind of blow off. This was a, a tournament style thing where w what we would do was we would prepare um, stories that were usually, I think, five to ten minutes uh, in a little booklet we would hold in our hands. And we would tell the story with emotion and hand gestures and things like that. Um, at tournaments. It's all like acting, but with your script directly in front of you, and it comes down to being storytelling. Um, when I was doing this, I kind of thought this is a lot of fun, and I would like to get into acting, but acting is so difficult to get into that I would never want to do it. So <laughs> I did it for four years in college. I forgot, four years in uh, high school, and when I went to college, I dropped the whole thing. I never thought that would ever come up to in my in my life again. I just thought that was like, oh, that was kind of fun. Like it made fun of because it was an oral interpretation class. Um, but 
Oh, damn it, that's actually what I do with my life now. So, <laughs> I, yeah, there were hints in the past. Um, and if you, if anyone else is interested, I yeah, if your if your school has an oral interpretation class or a speech team, seriously, give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. Not to mention, you generally get Fridays off uh, off school sometimes for tournaments. So there's that. Um, and no, I don't. I never did think that this would become as as big as it is. Um, a lot of the times, I'm still really shocked at how big it is because I think I said this in a previous video too. Whenever I look at my channel, I see a number. I don't really. It doesn't really click that that number is people. It's just a number. So um, when when me and Miss Shadow Lovely were at um, the ZoomiCon, and we were joking like, "Yeah, it's gonna have like five, ten people in this room. It's gonna be fine." Um, when there was actually like a full auditorium for us, we were like completely shocked and like, "Oh my God, what is going on? <laughs> Why are there so many people here?" Um, it, it doesn't really click, and uh, even still, I don't, I don't really feel like I'm that well known. So, I, I still like, uh, I appreciate every single one of you. It's not that I don't notice you. It's just that it doesn't click to me that people are not. <laughs> the numbers on there are actually a number of people. <laughs> Sparkles the Candy Panda asks, if you were any kind of animal, real or mythical, what kind would you be, and what would your mating call be? <laughs> Um, I, I'd like to say that I'm a penguin because I do that awkward thing where like I kind of wave my arms by my sides uh, whenever I feel uncomfortable. That a lot of people time tell me that I'm a puppy. So, because <laughs> if you know me in like real life, I'm like a shy kind of yappy weird guy. So, I guess that would be it. In which case my mating call would just be... Whoa! Uh, Suiko Stuck asks, What do you use to record and edit your videos? I'm thinking of starting a channel on my own, but I need to know what to use. Also, any tips on how to use those programs? Thanks, loves your videos, and your voice is heavenly. Thank you very much. Um, I think I'm answer I answered this a lot, but um, I used to use a Samson CO1U, um, which is a very good mic if you guys want to use that. Uh, just, like, if you're going to spend money on it, it's like $70. Uh, that mic... You probably want to just invest in like a little desk stand and a pop filter. Uh, all that together will probably run you like maybe a hundred bucks. Um, but it, it works great. Now I'm using uh, a Blue Yeti. Uh, same thing. I've just got a, a full mic stand and my pop filter here. I actually use Audacity to record on. I've had other programs that I, I've attempted to use. And I know that they have better capabilities, but I've gotten so used to using Audacity now, it's actually hard for me to learn a new program. Audacity is super easy to, to use, and it has a lot of uh, capabilities. Um, some of them are still going to be limited, but it's you can you can always find workarounds with it. Uh, not to mention, you can always add new effects and widgets on your own um, if you know where to look. Um, a lot of the times, if you're looking for a specific effect or something specific with Audacity also, you can Google whatever that is. Like, if you remember in... Um, the pastel man whenever the pastel man spoke he kind of had that ghostly um build up to his voice before every word that he said and um that was just me looking for ghost effect uh, audacity in google so a lot of the times you can get that the effect that you want and it, it gives allows you the ability to to alter every little effect and track that you have um at once so that that's what is what um that's what i use that's what i usually suggest everyone else to use because it's free um, and a lot of people ask this, and I know it's not on here now, but they'll ask, like, how do I get my audio to just upload to YouTube? And you don't. <laughs> what you're going to have to do is, um, in my older videos, when it was just one still image, that was it, and I would speak, um, I would just grab that, put it into Windows Movie Maker, grab my audio, put it into Windows Movie Maker, and just export it out. Um, now I'm using Sony Vegas, but if, you, if you're just getting started, just go with it. Uh, do what you can for now, and I wouldn't suggest even spending that much money. Just like a hundred dollars, uh, I know it's like still a lot of money. Um, if you just get, I would tell anybody if you have like a headphone or even karaoke mic, and you just want to do this, then just do it. Um, when you start getting like some feedback and things like that, and you feel like okay, now I want to try stepping this up and doing something more, then go ahead and spend money. But for now, if you just want to test it out, I feel like I want to do this. I want to try recording up one of my favorite stories. Do it. Uh, post it up on the creepypasta network.com and um, see what people have to say. Haunted Occupant 
uh, Haunted Octopus asks, Dude, what's your favorite pizza topping? And how do you like your crust? Serious questions. Finally, I love these. Um, favorite pizza topping, I actually usually get, um, like, combination pizzas or supreme pizzas. Or, uh, but my favorite topping off of all of those is probably sausage. I like the Italian sausage pizzas. Um, how do I like my crust? I usually do, uh, pan or hand-tossed, but I'm only doing hand-tossed now because the pizza has garlic crust, and that's freaking awesome. DTH Disguise asks, which do you think is better in a story? Ending? Oh, what do you think is better in a story's ending? Oh, <laughs> voice actor. Uh, quiet, tense ending, or exciting, goring ending? I, I much prefer the quiet, tense ending, because it allows me to play more with music. Um, an exciting, goring ending ending can still be really good though like the pocket did something like that where it's i got to as i was talking like get torn to pieces and that was just it, it worked out really well but i can't find a story that really ends on a really exciting high note uh really perfectly if somebody else can find one let me know because that would be that'd be interesting but it's it's hard to see one of those uh red dead not asks, would you teach little old me how to truly be creepy? It's easy. You just... I kind of want to ask this, this anonymous question just because it's really bad. Anonymous asks, if you had to be anally violated by the monster of any creepypasta, who would you pick? Jane. This is a kid's show. If you could visit anywhere in the world, uh, where would you go? Um, I can say this, I'm, I'm actually going to be taking um, a short trip, it's like two days, uh, and I'm going to be going over to Vegas in, in February. That's fun. Oh crap, it is February. In like two weeks. <laughs> so um, that's going to be fun. If I could go anywhere, honestly, I would like to go to Europe um, because a lot of creepypasta narrators are over there and I made friends with them and I want to be able to meet them in person. Um, not to mention just trips like gorgeous and I want to be able to see other things. Who doesn't want to travel when they're young? Like, seriously. That damn grenade asks, Hey MCP, do you hide facial hair under that mask of yours? Would be very interesting reveal if you took off your mask and pumped some big bushy snake oil salesman esque hair handlebar mustache. No, I don't actually. Um, I'm since I'm half Asian, I don't grow that much facial hair. <laughs> like I get like the goatee basically already. Um, but I I usually try to keep myself pretty clean shaven. I don't grow out that much of a beard, but when I do, like, it, if I have, like, a little bit of stubble, it actually makes me look older. Otherwise, if I, when I'm completely clean-shaven, I look like I'm 15. <laughs> Which leads us to Anonymous asking, how old am I? I am 25. Uh, little Miss Creepypasta Girl asks, what's the best way to get you to read a suggested story? I've tried email, but I don't want to clog up your email. Um, the best way to get me to read a story is actually through email. Um, but usually, whenever I'm picking out suggestions it's one that i see a lot of from different people so uh, like i know the chuggy e. cheese creepypasta is really big right now um i've been reading through it a little bit i'm not too sure why it's really big but I'm, I'm gonna do it because i see a lot of people asking for it in the uh in the comments and i see a lot of emails coming in um that have a link to it so yeah i'll, I'll do the one that's up on the, the wiki but um, that's the best way to do it is seeing a lot of people do it. I know a lot of the times, uh, guys, you guys will write your own um, your own creepy pastas. You want to send them to me for me to be able to read, um, and I, I do. Uh, which I mean, I apologize. I don't I don't reply to my emails um, a lot, but I, I'll do read through them. And sometimes when they're when they're really good and I, I can be able to use them for uh, for audio stories, then you know I'll, I'll queue them up or keep them open for um, for me to be able to record. But a lot of the times with the with original stories, because because they're original, uh, they don't have um, a lot of support. I know they don't have a lot of support from from other from other listeners. Um, I try to make sure that I can please as many people as I can uh, with with each story. So the original ones, I I can't do all the time. 
Uh, but that doesn't mean that I don't do them. That just means they they usually they have to be. I pri- try to prioritize what people want to see first um, before I, I go into doing the original ones or the, the some of the smaller requested ones. Um, Little Miss Creepy Pasta Girl asks, "Do I plan on going to any conventions this year?" Yes, I I am. I have um, two that are set up right now. Um, Mizumi Con in San Antonio in March. I looked there when that up. That is, um, is it March March twenty second? Is Mizumi Con uh, in San Antonio? That's at Our Lady of the Lake University. I'm going to Phoenix Comic Con this year in July, in June, June. I'm horrible with this. Uh, um, Phoenix Comic Con I'm doing in um, in, Ju- in June. Okay, Phoenix Comic Con June fifth through the eighth, and um, hopefully, because I know, uh, hopefully I'll be able to go to uh, Midori Con again uh, in the fall uh, there as a guest. So uh, any of my fans that I saw last year in Ohio, um, hopefully I'll be able to see you all again because that was that was a lot of fun. Um, same thing with Mizumi Con. Everyone that I I got to see who was there at the auditorium uh, last year in San Antonio. If you guys want to come see me again, or if you missed me last year, I would love to be able to meet you guys because that was so cool. That was probably one of my favorite shows to do. Um, was over at Mizumi Con. Masiana Sis asks, uh, "I've always admired the way you don't switch genders of characters when you read pastas. One of my favorite pastas that you've done is Mason, for example. Is there a reason why you haven't swift- switched genders, or are you just comfortable as they are?" Uh, well, I, I will switch genders, actually. Um, with some stories, I don't, because it's the gender really isn't that... Oh, God, I spilled my coffee. Uh, with some stories, I, I actually um, won't, because it's not really that big of a deal. Like, um, in Mason, I mean, it. I don't really need to um, change the gender, because... At no point do at no point does it actually refer to do I refer to myself as a girl. Um, in Mason, I actually just kind of played the character as as a homosexual male uh, who is interested in in Mason. So I I didn't have a problem with that at all. Um, in uh, the one that you you actually heard recently, what was it? Don't go in the basement. I actually did change that gender because it would say that I would be a sister. Um, which I, I feel like that, that actually kind of takes you out of the story a little bit if I'm referring to myself as a girl, when in your mind, like I said, when I try to think cinematically with things, because of my voice, I'm going to make the assumption you think that I'm a boy. Um, so if I make the, if I suddenly say like, oh, it's, it's on my nightgown, it, it kind of off puts you a little bit because now you're not sure if I've, if I've been cross-dressing the whole time or, um... I'm identifying as a girl and I haven't mentioned that and it's not part of the story then it becomes a bit confusing but when if if I'm just playing like a character like a male that's interested in another male it's it's not big enough of a leap like of a mental leap where now it's become confusing because oh this whole time I've assumed that you're you're supposed to be straight it's it's not that big of a thing it doesn't change the way that you were originally viewing the story um and I mean, like, it's not to say that there's an issue, you know, I don't want to go into, oh, that, oh, I think that there's an issue with, with cross-dressing or identifying with another gender. It's not the case. Um, I'm just trying to go with the, the basic assumption in me, that you, that you have, um, would probably be that if I'm talking as a male, I'm probably a male. <laughs> um, so... That's, that's kind of why, why I don't, um... I, I will change genders at times, but um, not not all the time. Simple Child's Play asks, um, I think you're making a creepy pasta yourself anytime. Yes. <laughs> I, I hate this because I'm going to like butcher everyone's name. Chiropterin Girl asks, Do you ever get nightmares or possibly wet dreams from any of the creepy pastas you do? Wow. I've had the nightmare question, but not the night, not the wet dreams one. I'll get nightmares. <laughs> yeah. 
Mr. Panda Yum Yums asks, everyone seems to ask you what your favorite story that you've narrated. So instead of that, what's the one pasta that you wish that you could have done better or didn't do at all? Hmm, that's an interesting one. I'm not going to say one I, I wish I didn't do at all. There's not really one that I wish I didn't do. Um, because I, I, if I, if I've done a story, I like it. Um, but there's some that I wish I could have done better at. Uh, to be honest, like, cause Pen Pal is one of, is probably my favorite series that I've, that I've done. Um, but the, because I started, I think I've gone through three microphones in the whole time that I've done Pen Pal. So if there's one that I want, would love to do better at was the beginning of Pen Pal. Um, it's same thing with Ben, honestly. Uh, Ben Drowned, I would love to be able to redo those because I did those with my karaoke mic, if I remember right. And that, I know a lot of people like it because it feels like it's a bit more, um, it it seems a little bit more raw, but I, I like to be able to sound quality, like authentic audiobook. So if there's one I would like to do, redo those. I wish I'd done better on. Anonymous asks, MCP, were you ever in a school play or something like that? I was when I was like real little. I was like elementary school. I was in school plays. I think I played, um, let's see, I played Macbeth at one point. Um, I played Macbeth. I played, um, I played a dog. <laughs> I played a horse. That's about it. Uh, those other two, I don't remember. That one was like a Mozart play, and another one was a um, like a Cinderella play where I played a horse. Yeah, where I got turned from a mouse into a horse. It was weird, but um, yeah, that was it. I've never been in anything big. I, I, I was never actually in theater when I was a kid. When I was like in high school, the only thing I ever did was was oral interpretation. So I wasn't in any real plays unless I was forced to be, which was elementary school. Anonymous asks, do I not take baths because of my fear of water? I'm not that hydrophobic. I am, like, afraid of deep water or dark water. So I can, like, I went to the beach a couple of months ago. And, um, I can stay in the shallows where it gets up to about my waist. Um, once, and even still, if I watch out towards the ocean, it will, it will start to make me nervous. Um, I, I just can't be out where it's it's so expansive uh, like if i'm out on a boat i need to be able to see where shore is i can't be surrounded by water i'll freak out uh so yeah i take baths uh specifically i take showers i'll do this one uh call me taurus tastic ask me a question that i've already answered actually where did the concept or concept art character uh for the big blue guy come from and what inspired him like i said uh silenced requiem dot deviant dot com um did a painting of me for her art class uh but she wanted to say uh that i should ask her mention her by name jaylen and uh yeah hi jaylen <laughs> um anonymous asks how do i feel about the new creepypasta monsters like tiki toby and the puppeteer um honestly i like them uh i think that it it should be a general progression uh into from the old to the new. I mean, like, how... Uh, let, let's say, for example, because this is... Creepypasta is a horror genre, or a horror subgenre. Um, so let's go ahead and take horror film, which is another horror subgenre. Uh, in horror film in the 80s, uh, we had... Well, let's say, in the 70s, we had Leatherface. Uh, and then in the 80s, you moved into having uh, Freddy Krueger and, uh, and uh, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers... And um, we didn't really lose Leatherface. I mean, we still make other stories to bring him back, even though we'll say, oh, well, he's, you know, he's he's the original guy. He just runs around with a chainsaw. He has an interesting story, sure, but, you know, everyone's going to get tired of him. But every couple of years, he's going to resurface. Um, and when we move into the future, then we start pulling in, like, new things, like Pumpkinhead came out in the 90s. Um, and then, like, you know, a Jigsaw and all those things in the 2000s and it's still nice to see these things yeah we have skeptics and like those people that kind of um elitists that want to stay with the old things saying oh they're never going to be as good as leatherface was or they're never going to uh jigsaw is never going to be as good as as freddy krueger was freddy krueger was the original horror guy 
Um, but it's it's a good thing that there's a progression and, and a growth. You, we need to have new things. We can't just stay in the old all the time. If we do, then then the genre never grows. So it's good to be able to see new stuff like this. And Tiki Toby and the Puppeteer, um, the Yellow Raincoat, uh, Clockwork, they're all different stories that... I mean, they follow they follow the format of creating a, a creepypasta that's that honestly I, I really like um, they seem to follow that same format even with uh, ooh, what was it? Snuffbomb made uh, Laughing Jack I think it kind of follows that that format that, that people like to see or at least the, the, the demograph for creepypastas that I, I've been able to see what you guys really like to see is a character that's really tortured um, that's really tortured to the point the fact that they're broken and there's something special about this character, some form of crazy or some form of dark that allows them to come back and um, and kill or mutilate or torture back uh, whatever it is that put them there. And Tiki Toby, uh, in Tiki Toby, there was something that there was a character that's done that. Laughing Jack has done that. Um, Clockwork has done that. Uh, the Puppeteer, it was. It, they had that that same uh, structure there. The yellow raincoat, though, that one I actually really like. That one, that one kind of broke the mold a lot, but it it still dealt with that that kind of tortured soul and not necessarily coming back and striking against it, but what resides within that torture. And uh, that's really good. So honestly, I how I feel about them, I love them. I love that there's new stuff that's appearing and it's it's all stuff that's catching on. Out of all the Poke Pastas that I've read, which one gives you the biggest chill down your spine? It says. I believe I believe I I I believe I I can't read that. The um the biggest one probably strangled red uh because it wasn't it, it didn't deal with something that was trying to reach out into the real world. It was like a modded game that had something to say about Pokémon. And I thought that was that was pretty good. That was pretty awesome. Uh Hayden Bear 1672 asks, "How do I prepare for a video?" Um, normally what I'll have is the same thing I have here. You heard me spill it a while ago. Um, I'll have a cup of coffee. Something warm. Uh, that way if I start to have, like, mucus or anything build up in my throat, I just kind of drink that and it clears it out. Um, I used to take a shot of, um, of whiskey or a shot of rum before I record to loosen me up. I don't do that anymore because I started recording in the mornings instead of the afternoon, so I'm a little bit more fresh. Um, and I don't want to be a drunk. Yeah, uh, I'll do a little bit of a vocal warm up, uh, the same kind of thing we used to do in um, an oral interpretation, which is I have tongue twisters. You get all of the blah, 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 out. Um, I'll sing a little bit and just kind of go through the alphabet, ba 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 kind of thing. Um, and then I'll I'll just start recording and I'll go through it in one take. Um, and depending on how how I do, like. If I feel like, oh, I I really missed that at the beginning, uh, then I might do it again. But uh, usually I'll do... Whenever you're hearing me record, that's my first real read-through of the story. Um, so that all of the emotion that you get from me whenever I'm surprised or whenever I'm nervous or scared, that's all completely raw, completely genuine, because it, it's the first time that I've read through that story. <clears throat> I love Tales 001 asked, um, what do you do when you're not reading creepypastas? Do you have a day job? Do you just chill at home? Shout out to Ube Wub. Ube Wub? Ube Wub? Um, whenever I'm not reading creepypastas, um, usually I'm either writing and collaborating with other people. I have my own personal life, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, what I do is, is just YouTube stuff. So I'm... I'm working with other different kinds of um, audio things too, but um, mainly I just it's my YouTube stuff. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I have my my own apartment, which I hardly ever leave <laughs> because I'm always here at the computer working on things. But uh, this is this is my main thing that I do. Uh, that and now I've gotten into playing the Secret World because it's an MMO that I, and I have fallen back into that horrible addiction. Anonymous asks, what's my dream job? I'm doing it. Evil Black Bunny asks, dude, did you steal my pillow? Yes. Suko Stuck asks, what happened to Mystery Imposter Reborn? Um, I just haven't touched it. 
like honestly um because i'm i'm working more with with um uh, well that's that's not even not the issue um the main issue with mr Green poster reborn is that uh, i can't i can't do a whole lot with it because all of the old fairy tales that we want to say are like available the versions of them that i can find or that i can do all have somewhat of a copyright to them so i can't touch them um which is why i've been stopping recording them uh that and also i just i don't have any time to be able to do it i could try searching through and finding different things i can record uh but the problem is that um the corporation that owns them uh as soon as their copyright would have run out they'll renew it so um a lot of things they're just kind of lost so mr Pew Foster reborn um i'm keeping everything up there until it gets forcefully taken down because i'm not really touching that channel anymore but um it's there for you if you want to go there but at the moment it's kind of dead and it looks like that's it friends so thanks for everybody who sent me uh sent me questions i'm sorry if um i didn't answer your question if you sent it to me the um i i know like a lot of you guys had asked the same question i just skimming through it and i ended up seeing that uh, and I, I had to skip them over because I answered them either earlier in this video or uh, in the last couple of Ask videos. Um, and I hope you guys still got everything that you wanted to hear from this because it's been almost an hour of me recording it. So, um, I'll go ahead and try doing one of these again, probably beginning of March, uh, since we did this beginning of February. But I hope you guys can come up with some really cool and interesting questions for me. And not even creepypasta related ones, you just ask me anything. Just like, hey... You're wearing boxers or briefs. So yeah, bye guys. <laughs> I'll see you with a new story um, every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday.